Let's try it again. Let's stand together and let's sing the first verse, all right? Are you washed in the blood? Been to Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood? In the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb, are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Thank you. you may be seated. <laughs> Amen. All right. Good to see you this evening on this uh, rainy day, but uh, thank the Lord all the white stuff stayed north of us if you're not a so glad you're here tonight appreciate it um very quickly want to mention i think we had a good lord's day all right and appreciate brother reichman a lot of stuff a lot of information and you sort of had to stick with it because he just kept on rolling didn't he but um, i hope there was something there you could learn and uh, glean from and uh, that it was a blessing so we appreciate it so we'll look forward to this sunday and again, hope you'll be here. I want to mention to you, if you want to drive around the back, um, all the pavilion outside lights are on now, and they're on with a timer like the rest of our lights. So it just sort of looks neat and give you a little glimpse of what's coming on. Of course, there's the lights that go on inside. They won't be on the main lights and the fans and so on. But uh, anyway, if you want a little night, night drive around Calvary, just zip around back, and uh, at least you'll see a little bit of what's going on. And uh, thank the Lord for the decent weather we have had because they've been able to keep working, and everything's really coming together to nice, and it won't be long before it's done. So praise the Lord for that. Um, well, let me pray, and I'll give you a few other updates, all right? Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this evening, the opportunity to come together. And Lord, thank you for, again, what is being accomplished and Lord, there's always just a season when we've got to continue to take care of our lands and our buildings, and thank you for allowing us to update some things, and Lord, uh, we believe these facilities belong to you, and we do want to be good stewards and take care of them, and Lord, thank you for allowing us to do that. Thank you for a people that are willing to give. Amen. All right, out in the hallway, there is a lost and found table set up with stuff that has been collected over the other side for some time now, so... Uh, as you go out, take a look and uh, name it and claim it if you want it, I guess, if it's yours especially, all right? We'll probably leave it out there through Sunday, and uh, but take a check and please make sure whatever is there that's yours, you pick it up if you would. Um, let me mention to you too, this is sort of a silly announcement in some respects, but uh, believe it or not, I, I really need to make it. Um, again, our gentlemen have been in. Uh, we had two more of our rooms done on the far side. Uh, today with the new carpet pad being laid in uh, pastor Austin's room and next to it which I think is brother Rick's classroom and so now they're done um, and we're just going to continue to knock them all off and uh, the Lord is blessing it's going well uh, but they're going to be around for here for a while as we continue to work into our foyer area and so on and uh, so there is now another dumpster out there so if you drive out by the barn you see that dumpster it's for the carpet guys all right, that's all I want to say. Um, we don't want to see people bringing in all your garbage and filling their dumpster because it's not ours, okay? So just understand, if you see that extra one out there, it is uh, essentially the carpet and tile guys, and they'll be using that over the next while and putting stuff in there, all right? We had a situation the other day, I won't get into it, it's sort of funny in some respects, but uh, something got damaged around the church building here, and and uh, it was a company that came and 
delivered stuff and whatever, and um, nothing was said. And uh, the funny thing was, I discussed it with one of our assistant pastors out front with the gentleman standing right there, and he never said a word. And uh, so I came in with one of our assistant pastors. I said, um, we go to those cameras. Can we go back far enough? To he said, oh, yeah. We went to the cameras, and sure enough. And uh, so I walked to the individual, and I said, uh, boy, I said, I, 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 yeah. I said, well, you know what? We checked the cameras. Face dropped. Oh, uh, uh, could I see that? I said, sure. <laughs> so I show you. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> anyway, there's cameras everywhere, amen? On the street, everywhere we go. But I don't know why I told you this story. People are funny. Anyways, uh, extra dumpster, that's what it's there for. Please, again, just don't use it for your convenience. And we would appreciate that, all right? Thank you. All right, other announcements we need to make. Ladies, Thursday, or excuse me, Friday night, You've got your activity here at the church at 6.30. And then Saturday morning, men, don't forget, if you desire to come to the men's breakfast, that will be here at 9 o'clock. Please, again, ladies and gentlemen, sign up for that if you would, all right? And looking ahead to April 1 as well, sign up for our meet and eat. It's going to be a good Saturday, a good time of fellowship together. So, again, here we go, rounding the corner into March and looking forward to our activities, all right? Let's go to our prayer requests, if you would, this evening. Got a few updates for you. We'll mention on the front, as always, our classes of the week, praying for our third and fourth class with uh, Nolan and Cooper, and then with Tim and Lori, Calvary Families class with Brother Watson, and then our janitorial staff and our governor, Mike DeWine. Let's be praying for them. All right, under a general request, uh, we did go through and try to update um, some things that we had not heard about for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, uh, <coughs> again, I say if there's... Somebody on there that we took off, and you said, well, I really like them still be on there. Just, you can phone the office or let us know, but we just tried to sort of clean it up a bit and get it up to date as much as we thought. Um, and so, again, if there's something we've done, taken away that you want still on there, just phone the office and let us know, and we'll make sure we take care of that, all right? Um, any updates we had? First of all, remember, under cancer list, Justine Shoemaker. Uh, she'll be having some updates on the 28th. That's just around the corner now. And so if you'd pray for her. And Ruth Aber asked us to pray for her cousin, uh, Karen Critchbaum, uh, that is battling brain cancer. And so please remember to pray for her. Under our general health, um, again, continue to pray for Joe and uh, Joe Finello for his health and strength. Pray for Kay as well. We mentioned this. Uh, pray for Kay Shoemaker, her health and strength. Please appreciate that. <coughs> Excuse me. And then under mums to be, we mentioned this Sunday, uh, forgot to get it on the prayer list. So we need to under mums to be add Nina Cole, if you would. All right. And uh, add that one. And our list continues to grow, as you can see. And that's a good thing. All right. So you pray for these ladies and add Nina Cole. You say, who's Nina Cole? Well, it's Nina Mosier. All right. Nina Mosier Cole. There you go. All right. That's really the updates we had. Two more to mention to you. Amy Keller has asked us to pray for her nephew, Jacob Payton. He's 12 years of age. Jacob Payton, that's P-E-Y-T-O-N, uh, is having severe... Remember to pray for Jacob Payton with these stomach issues. Please pray uh, for Sherry Farquharson. Uh, she was doing better with this bronchitis and respiratory stuff, but it sort of hit her again. And uh, so we just asked to pray that... Again, the Lord would touch her and heal her of that, all right? And they would appreciate that. All right, that's what we had as far as updates. Anything else that we need to mention tonight? Updates or additions to what's there? Just raise your hand real quick. Our men will come running with the mics if there's anything at all. Pray for one. I know it's a general statement. We get a lot of people battling what I had for three weeks, this bronchial, all that stuff. I think... I think if I'm not mistaken, Andrea, she received before tonight, 10 of her kids are out of junior choir tonight, parents texting with them sick, bronchial, cold, so just a lot of it going around. Go figure, one day when it's 70 and the next day it's 30. Don't understand it, but anyway. Any other requests health-wise tonight? Anything at all? All right, anything beyond health needs? Any other requests, updates? All right, well, I appreciate that. Well, there you have the updates and so on. So if you're here for the first time on a Wednesday night, we're just going to take about 
eight, nine minutes together and pray, especially over these newer requests and updates. We appreciate you doing that. And then when the music begins, we'll get back together and look at our lesson this evening. All right? God bless you. Thank you as you pray.
All right, if you have your Bibles tonight, I invite you to go to the book of Philippians. Book of Philippians, we're going to look at chapter number four and really look at the whole chapter this evening as Paul finishes this epistle to the church at Philippi who he truly loved and really loved Paul. And uh, the last chapter, again, is an encouraging, challenging chapter about Christian living, especially what we want to look at tonight which is entitled, The Enablement of Christian Confidence. The Enablement of Christian Confidence. Uh, years ago, I read a quote that said this, as Christians, we may never, or excuse me, we should never be arrogant, but we certainly should be confident. And there is a difference between being arrogant and being confident. Um, I believe um, whatever you go into in life, knowing that is what you're supposed to do, you can be confident in that. But you don't have to be arrogant. Um, I've heard so many times, of course, in the sporting world and athletes and so on, essentially say or give the, the thought that, man, if, if you're going to make it, if you're going to you know, go to the big leagues, you've got to be confident in yourself. You've got to be confident in your abilities. And, and, and know what, what you're doing and where you're going. doesn't mean you're arrogant or smart out of it, but you're confident in it. And I think that's true really in anything in life. Um, I give this little personal illustration, and again, you can take it for what it's worth as to my <coughs> singing ability of what it used to be and maybe where it is today um, or whether you feel it was any good or not. But um, I remember when I first started singing, I'll never forget the first time I sang. I was 19 years of age, and I probably told you this, but I sang. We had a big outreach banquet at our church up there in Canada, and I sang uh, to a background CD, Shepherd of Love. How many remember that song? We don't sing it a whole lot anymore. Shepherd of love, you knew I had lost my way. Shepherd of love, da 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 And I got up there. And I can remember, oh boy, I can see me in that little auditorium to this day, standing behind that pulpit, my knees literally started to sort of shake. And I remember singing that thing, and it came out like this. Shut up, bird of love, you knew I... One lady came up to me after and said, boy, you have wonderful vibrato. And she was joking, of course. It was just a pile of nerves. I couldn't sing. I was so nervous. Um, I continued to practice and so on. And I did take, for six months, I took voice lessons. Uh, from this lady and she was a good voice teacher and the first time I sang to her and I sang through a verse of a song I can't remember what it was but she said to me this sort of same thing she said Harry you definitely have a decent voice and good potential but the problem is you're too nervous she said, you got to get over that whether you're singing to one person or a thousand people it doesn't matter you have to get over being nervous because the potential is there and she's right, and she was right. And it's that you never go to the position of singing, at least I've always felt arrogantly, but you gotta go confidently. You have to have that or you will not come across and minister like you need to. And I think it's true in anything in life. Uh, you can be a wonderful whatever. Don't be arrogant, about it. be confident though in your calling, be confident in what you're doing. Hey, tonight, Christian, I want to challenge us in this area. Let's be confident as Christians. We're living in a day and age when we are pounded into a non-confident type of Christianity. You understand what I'm saying? The humanistic world, the political world, the world out there that is telling us in every way, shape, and form, you Christians just sort of quiet yourself. You do your thing. But don't bring it out into our society. I want to encourage us tonight that we can be enabled to be very confident in our Christianity. Not arrogant. Not smart aleck. But we can be sure and confident in what we believe and what we hold to. Hey, can I be honest with you? Is there not in our day and age, in many areas with social agendas and so on, are they not confident in what they believe? Come on, think about it today in our society. Yeah, they are. Very confident, very bold, very arrogant. There's movements today out there that are anti-God, anti-biblical, and they are very confident, to me, even crossing confidence into arrogancy about what they hold to, what they believe. 
There's things we hear today, things we see on the TV, things we watch. 25 years ago, we'd never, ever believed it would be there. But because these groups have become very confident, very organized, they are out front today and leading in their cause and winning. And sad to say, we as Christians have lost our confidence in who, what we believe and who we serve. And I'm preaching to myself. We need to be not arrogant, not smart aleck, but we need to be confident in what we hold to. I think this is what Paul taught the church at Philippi. And the reason I believe is because remember where they were at this time. You say, well, where were they? They were under the Roman domination. Paul was writing from jail. Christianity was being brutalized under the Roman Empire. And Paul comes along in chapter number four, concluding this epistle. He says, hey, we can be confident as Christians. Paul was confident, but his confidence did end him up in jail. Now, I'll be the first to admit as a Christian, I, I don't want to go to jail. I'm going to be honest about that. But we must stand and we must be confident and we must know in whom we believe. And so we want to look at some principles tonight. Here's what the word confidence means. <clears throat> this isn't in your notes, but it just means this. A belief in the certainty based on relationship. A belief in a certainty based on relationship. And that's what the word confident really believes. Uh, and again, what we're going to read here in Philippians chapter 4, and I'm just going to use this one verse, a very familiar verse. Verse number 13 is our springboard. Paul was a very confident man here. Uh, the words of someone uh, that was dealing with circumstances that were beyond his control. But he says in verse number 13, this very familiar verse, he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. That's a very confident verse. Not arrogant, but confident. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. This was a spiritual verse with spiritual application. Again, Paul at this time, listen to me, he was under arrest awaiting Caesar's decision concerning his life when he wrote these words to the church at Philippi. If anybody had reason not to be confident at this time, it was probably Paul. If the decision by Caesar was favorable, Paul would probably live, but if not, he would die. No appeal was strong enough to change Caesar's mind once it was made up. That was it. And for most prisoners, the torture was in waiting for such a decision to be made. And so Paul spent at least, we know, two years in this set of circumstances, never knowing if the sunset he had just seen would be his last. But yet he's bold enough and confident enough to write, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. I believe the words here supersede any of the darkest trials Paul had that led him to a confidence that reached beyond his human thought and his human ability. The confidence grows when we realize that in times of trouble, there is something or someone that gives us a security beyond what we can even imagine. Now, that's easy to preach, but that's a tough thing to live. I believe Paul here emboldened what John wrote in chapter 10 and verse 29 of his gospel when he talked about the Lord holding us in the palm of his hand. And nothing could ever break through to destroy. Paul was confident in what the apostle John wrote. Matter of fact, Paul also said this, didn't he? Remember 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4 and 5? He said, and such trust have we through Christ to Godward, not that we are sufficient, and that word means confident, not that we are sufficient or confident of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency or confidence is of God. That's a powerful verse. And Paul is saying, I am confident in Christ. I'm confident in God. And because of that, I can be a confident Christian. He said, I can do all things through Christ. Now, he gives us more detail through chapter number four about this on how we can be enabled to be confident Christians. Easy to preach, easy to challenge, 
but we can be confident in these four principles. Let me give them to you tonight. Number one, in Philippians chapter number four, I want to start to read in verse number four, just two verses, verse four and five. The Bible says this, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto man. Notice this next phrase. The Lord is at hand. I want you to notice two things he says in verse 4 and 5, which is our point number one. We can be Christian. We can be Christians with confidence because, number one, of the presence of God. The presence of God. Look what it says in verse 4. He said, rejoice in who? The Lord. Would you not agree with me that if I were to write that verse or you were to write it, it'd probably go more like this. Rejoice when circumstances are good. Again, I say rejoice. I'm just being honest with you. I'm much more a happy or joyful guy when all my circumstances are good. Would you not agree? When my health is good, the family's behaving themselves, the kids are good, the bills are paid. The church is good. Everything's smooth. I can much easily say, I'm just being honest with you, rejoice when circumstances are good. That's not what Paul said. Because you know what? There's no confidence in circumstances. Because you know as well as I know, we can wake up tomorrow morning and circumstances can change like that. Flash of an eye. Flash of an eye. Flash of an eye. Snap of a finger. All of a sudden, it can happen. By the way, I don't know why this just came to mind. Remember to pray for John Lang, all right? He had a mild stroke. Sorry, I mean to mention that, and I forgot. And the reason it came to my mind is just because of the illustration I'm going to give. Uh, I was talking to John on the phone the other day. Out of the blue. Out of the blue. And by the way, he's still over at uh, Med Central. I still call it over in Mansfield, all right? So remember to pray for John Lang. He's doing okay, but a mild stroke. But he said, I can't believe it. He said, one day I'm there, and the next day, what's going on? Folks, circumstances change. That's why really we can be happy in good things. And I don't think that's wrong, amen? Happy and enjoying things that come our way. Good report, new car, new house, new furniture, new clothes, good meal. That's all right. We can be. But you and I know that those circumstances can change real quick, Okay? That's why Paul said, listen, what do we rejoice in? Where do we find our confidence? In circumstances? In things? In money? In homes? In cars? Nothing wrong with them. But that's not where we're going to find our confidence. Because all of those things change. They crumble. They rot. They get destroyed. We lose them. So he said what? As he's in prison, rejoice in the Lord. There it is. And then he said in verse number five, let your moderation be known unto men. That's just speaking. Let, let your witness, let your gospel testimony, let the good things of God be known. Rejoice. You ever do that? We share things as Christians, don't we? Sure, our, our hard times, our bad times, but sometimes we'll go, boy, oh, praise God this happened. Amen. Let your moderation be known. But notice what he said. Why? The Lord is at hand. So here he's telling us, how do I have a confidence as a Christian? The presence of God. How's your relationship with God? Remember we preached a couple of weeks ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, the five different men we looked at, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, the three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Paul. Remember, what was it that helped them all? The loving presence of God there it is all of them were in tough situations all of them were in tough situations circumstances but it was the loving presence of God that gave them the strength they needed I think this is what Paul again is saying here he was saying folks listen I'm, I'm in a sort of a bad situation here I'm in prison I'm in jail and I can't find much rejoicing in that but I can rejoice in the Lord the Lord is at hand. How do I do, how, how do I get into the presence of God? Well, this isn't in your notes, but 
You got to read your Bible. You got to pray. You got to do what you're doing tonight. Come together, fellowship, forsake not the assembling of yourself. You got to listen to it on the radio. You got to watch it on the TV. I'm just saying, how do you? You got to get into God's presence. Spend time with him. And then you will begin to rejoice in the Lord. It's not easy in the world we live, but it can still happen. <clears throat> There's an old gospel song came out back in the 80s. It was actually a beautiful song. And one of the lines in it was that he's as close as the mention of his name. Jesus, Jesus. He's as close as the mention of his name. And it's true. Jesus said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Paul put it this way, the Lord is at hand. To know God's presence, you must live in it. You must live in it. Hold your finger there. I want you to see this verse. You probably know it, but if you mark in your Bible and you've never marked it, go to Psalm 91. Go to Psalm 91. It's a great verse. Psalm 91. As a matter of fact, it's 911. Psalm 91, verse 1. All right? It's your 911 spiritually. Listen to this. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. You know what that is? That's the presence of God. He that dwelleth, dwelleth, he that dwelleth, not runs in and out, but spends time there. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. Then Paul said in verse 2, then essentially I say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Isn't that good? There's your 911 spiritually. Think about it. He that dwelleth in the presence of God, the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. How can I be a confident Christian? Not arrogant, not smart aleck, but confident. Number one, be in the presence of God. Now, it's going to take some work, and it takes time, but it's well worth it. Number two, going to Psalm, excuse me, back to Philippians chapter number four. Not only the presence of God will help you, but the power of God. This is the second thing that enables us to have a Christian confidence, being in his presence, but number two, the power of God. Verse number 13, very familiar verse again. We've been there. I can do all things, but here's what I want you to note in this, through Christ. Now, Paul goes into this so much, doesn't he? I can do all, we just sort of mention it. The Lord is at hand. Rejoice in the Lord. This principle he keeps going back to of Christian confidence it comes through Christ. It is the power of God. The power available to each of us is incredible, and it's far beyond what we could really even imagine. Powerful things are impressive, aren't they? Let's be honest about it. Uh, powerful things. Uh, I will admit, I used to enjoy watching off and on I said I don't need to write it down because I'll remember the title. It was Tool Time Tim, whatever that was, show, all right? And you remember Tim always used to be thrilled and amazed with powerful things, ooh, 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 ooh. you know, powerful engines and powerful cars, and he just was wowed by all that stuff. He just loved it. Uh, probably a sort of a man thing, I get it, uh, but home improvement, that's what it was, home improvement. He loved that stuff, and I got to admit, powerful things are pretty impressive. Um, my son Tyler, who works for a, a physical therapy company uh, called Berg, was uh, essentially doesn't do in the hands on anymore. He's working for this company. He's enjoying it, but getting their products into hospitals and into uh, different areas of athletics and so on. Well, uh, a couple of months ago, a few months ago, he got a uh, he got a interview for his materials and and his stuff with the AD of Ohio State University down in Columbus. And he met him in the training facility where the guys pump the iron, the weights room, all of that. Actually, it's going back into the football season. And uh, so he told me this was all going to happen. I said, well, I'll pray, man. It goes well because, you know, he wants them to use their equipment and all the ice stuff and the machines and so on. <clears throat> well, as soon as he got done, he gets on the phone to me. 
dad. He says, oh, my word, you wouldn't believe this place. And I said, what do you mean? He says, man, we walked through the doors, and he said, they're sort of electric doors. And he said, I walked in, and he says, you would not believe that must be millions of dollars in this training room for the football team and the weight room and so on. And he's just going on and on. And I got to admit, I've never seen anything like it, you know, and this is the first time he ever saw it. He said it was incredible, and he said there had to be probably six or seven of the linemen. He said, Dad, the, their one leg was probably as thick as my body. He said it was incredible. And these guys are just pumping five, 600 pounds, and he said I'm sitting there watching them, and I'm just like this little feather. And, but he said the power of these guys, and they're squatting with the weights and everything, and he's just going on and on. I said, Ty, I got to admit, I've never seen anything like it. He said, it must have been pretty cool and all of that. But powerful things, there's just something about it. Powerful airplanes, powerful cars, powerful locomotives. I mean, it's just something about it. Would you not agree, folks, spiritually speaking, sometimes we're not very powerful Christians. Matter of fact, sad to say, sometimes we're pretty weak. Why is that? I think we've got to get back to being confident in who we are in Christ. Not arrogant, not smart aleck, confident. And it comes through the power of Christ. The Bible says in Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3, I'm just reading a, a phrase of it. The Lord is our present help in time of trouble. We've got to get in the presence of God so we can get the power of God back upon us. That's what Paul is saying. I can do Listen to what he said now. I can do some things, a few things. I can do many things. I believe words are important. He said, I can do all things through Christ. Now, I, I know this is spiritually speaking. I understand that. And it's doing the will of God, and it's being that confident Christian. But he said, I can do it. But it has to be through Christ. So how do I get to know Christ? I've got to be in his presence. And as I'm in his presence, I begin to glean upon his power. Uh, remember the song? We still sing it uh, rarely once in a while. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns in heaven and above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. And we repeat it with power and love. We do serve a powerful God. Good night. He created the world and the universe and all that is. He's powerful. He is a great, big, wonderful God. Well, how do we come with that? By being in his presence. I can do all things through Christ. That's pretty powerful. And I believe we can apply that to our own walk with God. I believe we can apply it to being the dad he wants us to be, the mom he wants us to be, the grandparent he wants us to be the church member he wants us to be, the pastor he wants us to be. I believe it can go into every area of our life, the church he wants us to be. Folks, we can do all things through Christ. We just got a desire to be a confident Christian again, not beat down, not destroyed by a humanistic liberal world, but rather like Paul writing from prison said this, you can be confident, church at Philippi, by the presence of God. And Number three, I believe this will come into play after those two. Philippians 4 and verse 7, the peace of God. Peace of God. What an incredible blessing to the Christian. The peace of God which passes all understanding. And that peace, verse 7, Paul says, will keep your hearts and your minds, here it is again, through Christ Jesus. Are you noticing something tonight? The Christian's confidence comes in the presence of God, from the power of God, and through the peace of God. Here, Paul says the peace of God. How does it come? Through Christ. There it is. To me, when I was reading this, finishing up a little bit today, I was like, wow. It's, there. it's just all there. It's just we don't want to live it. And we're missing. We're missing the best. As a confident Christian, not arrogant, not smart, in God's presence and with his power, 
We can have a peace. Pass is all understanding, but how do we get it? Through Christ Jesus. <laughs> when I was reading this today and thinking about it, as again, even I think about it tonight, I got to be honest and say, many times I try to find peace in other things. I do. Oh, if, if, I can, if I can just get a good night's sleep tonight, if I can just get good solid six, seven hours, well, I had to, that lasts for a while. Oh, if I could just, if I can have that vehicle, man, if I, if that'll, just, that'll just give me the peace. Well, if I can just make that, if I can just have that job, and I'm not saying any of these things are wrong. They're not wrong. But they're not going to give us as Christians confidence. Oh, if, if, if that guy can just become the president. Oh, if that person will just become governor. Oh, if that person will just, then everything will be. Come on. Come on, really? We're, we're looking for peace from men in a fallen world. I'm not saying, hey, <laughs> vote for the right men. Vote for the right woman. I'm going to, with the best of my ability and God's help, I believe we should always vote and vote right and vote godly, and boy, that's a part of it all. But if you think that's going to bring a utopia of peace to this world, dream on. There'll be no peace in the world till the Prince of Peace comes. But until then, for the Christian, listen, the peace of God that passes understanding, listen, to the, listen will keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. That's pretty powerful stuff. That's biblical counseling, biblical psychology right there. Through Christ, the peace of God, it's there. It's available. Would you not agree, as I mentioned to you many times, as humans, we're more leaning towards the fretting and the worrying. May God help us to find the peace that God truly wants to give. Go to John chapter 14, would you? Keep your finger there in Philippians 4. We've got one more point we're going to finish with. I'm just saying, this confidence that Paul is talking about for the Christian, it is available. From the presence of God to the power of God, giving us the peace of God. You remember what Jesus Christ himself said as he was preparing to head to the cross? And again, think about what these disciples were dealing with as they were talking with the Lord and Put yourself in their position to think, gosh, what are we going to do? You know, the Lord's telling us he's going to die and raise the third day, and then he's going to ascend to heaven. What are we going to do without the Lord? Now, you think about that. Here's what Jesus said, John 14, 27. Peace I leave you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. There it is from the words of the Lord Jesus Christ himself. You want to be a confident Christian? There's peace through Jesus Christ. He said it in Philippians 4 and he just said it in John 14. He said, you're not going to find it in the world. It's not there. But you will find it in me. And that's what I want to leave you guys. That's what he said to the disciples and that's what he says to us. I want to leave you of peace, so you can be confident in the Christ you serve and the way you live. There's an old gospel hymn. It's in most of our hymnals. Again, we don't sing it much anymore. Far away in the depths of my spirit tonight rolls a melody sweeter than song. In celestial strains it unceasingly falls or my soul like an infinite calm. Peace, peace, wonderful peace, down from the Father above. Sweep over my spirit forever, I pray, in fathomless billows of love. I like the last verse. It says, soul, are you here without or rest? Marching down the rough pathway of time, make Jesus your friend. Ere the shadows grow dark, accept this sweet peace so sublime peace peace wonderful coming down from the father above sweep over my spirit forever i pray in fathomless billows of love the last point is this from paul in philippians 4 again a very familiar verse the christian confidence comes 
presence of God, which gives us the power of God, which leads us to the peace of God, and then we can claim the promise of God. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 19, right? We know it. My God shall supply. Now, I sometimes just like to stop there. The rest of the verse, yes, is so good. All your need according to his riches and glory by who? Christ Jesus. Have you noticed almost in every verse the mention of by Jesus, by Christ, by the Lord? You want peace? You want promise? You want presence? You want power? It's all by Jesus. Here it is again. My God shall supply. There it is. Now, I like and think it's appropriate to many times use this verse, and we do, to material need and material blessings, and I believe that's true. I don't believe God will allow the righteous to be forsaken. I said someone earlier tonight, it might not always be T-bone steak. Some nights it might be a peanut butter sandwich, but, you know, God will always take care of it. He'll take care, by the way, of your need. Maybe not all your wants, but the Bible does say your need. But my God, Paul said, here he is in prison, writing this, shall supply. And that supply will come through Christ Jesus. Folks, we need to take that further beyond just the physical material. I believe we need to take it to the emotional, the mental, the spiritual. In every area of life, God promises to supply. That's pretty confident, isn't it? Pretty confident. I don't know many people in the world can go around and say, well, I know all of my needs are going to be met. But you know what? The Christian can. Because my God shall supply. When I have emotional needs, he can take care of that. When I have mental needs, he can take care of that. When I have spiritual needs and I'm struggling in my spiritual life, God can take care of that. When I have physical needs, I believe God can take care of that. But you know what? We've got to have confidence in the Christ we serve. Well, how does that happen? Get in his presence, get his power, know his peace, and claim his promise. And God shall supply. So I ask you tonight, challenge to my own heart, do I have the confidence I should have as a Christian? It's there. It's available. It can be ours through God's presence, his power, his peace, and his promise. And that's why Paul could say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Father, we love you tonight and we thank you for these incredible words from Paul to the church at Philippi, but also to us tonight. And so, Lord, in a world when we as Christians are laughed at and mocked and scorned, as Paul even was, to the point where they put him in prison. May we not be arrogant, may we not be smart, Alec, but may we be confident in who we are in Jesus and claim these blessings and grow in the grace and the knowledge of Christ. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Appreciate you being here. Lord willing, we'll see you Sunday. Amen.